Okay, now we're back. We're going to analyze uh, Newton's equations, F equals MA, and we're going to use a setup called the uh, Atwood's machine. We have uh, two pulleys like this and a string over the pulley. Something like that. And then what we'll do is we'll uh, make one of them slightly he uh, heavier than the other one. So let's call this one, let's say the heavier one, M2, and then we'll call this one, the lighter one, uh, M1. So M2 is greater than M1. So what's gonna happen? Well, if it's a little heavier, this one is gonna accelerate down, this one is gonna accelerate up, and the tension in the string, you have M1G, and then you have tension in the string, M2G, they will both accelerate at the same rate. So this one is going to accelerate up. This one is going to accelerate down. And we have T minus M1G is equal to M1A. So what we're doing is applying Newton's second law. Sum of the forces is equal to MA. Uh, the tension in the string minus the weight of the M1 is equal to its mass times its acceleration. And for the heavier one, its weight is greater than the tension, so it's accelerating downward. So we have M2G minus T is equal to M2A. So um, this is the theoretical acceleration as given by Newton's laws. Okay, the experimental acceleration, we're gonna use a clever technique. We're gonna be uh, imaging this as it happens with a webcam. Then we're going to be analyzing, with, analyzing it with a program called Logger Pro, and we're going to be plotting the motion of these guys. We could focus on the one that's going down, or we could focus on the one that's going up, and then we plot the motion of the object, and over a certain amount of time, it's going to start speeding up. So we'll put little dots on the computer, and then we'll make a plot of the velocity of the object versus time. And then the computer will give us the acceleration uh, of that uh, object, and then we'll compare that to the experiment uh, with the theoretical acceleration. So you'll see how this works. Okay, so let's uh, see over here. You see the, uh, the pulleys. I have a, a ruler here, a meter stick for a reference so we can know what the distances are. I have already placed a uh, hanger and 200 grams, a hanger 200 grams. So right now I already have 250 grams on both of them. And then I'm gonna add an extra 20 grams. So what's gonna happen is, let's calculate the, the theoretical acceleration. M1 is gonna be 250 grams. M2 is gonna equal 270 grams. So my theoretical acceleration is going to be their difference, which is 20, divided by their sum. The sum of them is going to be 0, 12, 1, 5. 520 times 9.8. Okay, so A theoretical is equal to uh, 20, so that's going to be what? Uh, 26. 26, how many times does it go into 98? So let's calculate that here. Uh, Nine point eight divided by twenty six. So about point three seven seven meters per second squared. The theoretically expected acceleration. Okay. So now let's actually run it. So you could see here on the other side. We have a webcam set up, and as the webcam is uh, imaging uh, the, the falling or the rising of the two masses, we have the webcam connected to the Logger Pro program, and the Logger Pro is set up so to capture the image. Okay, so I'm gonna go over here, and then you, guys, you can see it from that uh, point of view. Okay, so one of the things also that you have to do to make the, the program recognize the scale of the, the, the distances and all that is you have to put some kind of a pointer and use it as a marker 
so that later on we could put that as a scale. So what I did is I put two pointers here and drew their, uh, the tip here of the pointers and then did this one and this one, the distance between them, I made it exactly 10 centimeters. It doesn't have to be 10, it could be anything that you want it to be, but that will be used as a scale. So now we go over here to the camera, and you could see that uh, the, the two uh, tapes are shown there with the black markers on it, and now that's my weight. So now I'm pretty much ready to, to set this up. I'm gonna put the, the 20 grams on the one that's up here, and it's gonna fall down. So let me click here, start capture. Place this here, and I can let it go. Okay, so now let's analyze this. So we'll put this to the side. The, we'll blow up the video, okay? And then we go over here, we, there is the thing here called set a scale. So you click that and then you come from down here all the way to down here. Okay? So the better you set the scale, the better the result that you will get. So right now that's 10 centimeters, so point one, and then the units is meters. And then you go, okay. So that means that the program recognizes that your scale for that distance is point one. Now you go over here and you set your origin. You could set the origin wherever you want. I just, I'm just gonna put it at the bottom, like this. Okay, then I'm gonna go over here and run it frame by frame until, until the thing is about to go down. Okay, I could call wherever I want my origin. So I'm gonna start putting points. See where it says here, add point. Okay. okay, so what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna choose an arbitrary location along the object. I could choose the bottom of the object or I could choose the top. Let's choose the top right here. Oops, that was the, that was the scale there. That was the axis. So let's go over here. Choose the top, put a dot. Okay, then move one. Okay, put another dot. another one okay so okay so you could see here the y velocity as a function of time it gets negative 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 more and more negative and it does look linear so do a linear fit of this you could see here that the slope comes out to be negative 0.42. The correlation comes out to be 0.9893, so that means it's close to a straight line. If I want, I could change this uh, so that I'm analyzing a certain portion of the graph, okay? So I could focus on this portion, or I could focus on this portion. I could change the last one. I could focus on this portion. So roughly, I'm getting a slope within 0.44, 0 0.44, 0 0.45, 0 0.42. Remember, what was my theoretical slope? My theoretical slope was 0 0.37, uh, 0 0.377. So that means I'm within the boundary of the, my theoretical slope. So I would go back, reset my scale, and do it several times until I get the best run uh, from this data. So you can see how the Video analysis can be combined with the actual AdWords machine to prove Newton's law and its application. Thank you.